Hello everybody, this is week 10 for the lecture of Mac 468 and the 949. Um, before this lecture, we already have two classes to cover the basics for the frequency domain of um, digital controller system. We analyze the um, Z transformation and also the issues introduced by those digital components. Um, both the um, sampling component and also uh, the re reconstruction component. So the D digital to analog and analog, analog to digital components. Um, in this class, we're going to introduce um, some one of the uh, design methods uh, for the digital controller. Uh, we call it emulation methods. So there's many different ways to address uh, digital control. And we're only going to use this, this single method. Uh, the other methods are available, but uh, due to the limited time, we can't uh, really cover everything. So this is what I consider probably the simplest way to design a digital controller. If, if you already have the uh, background for continuous time controller design. Um, the main thing we need to consider here is the uh, filter, anti-alias filter, and also zero order hold. We mentioned in last week these two components will introduce time delay for the system. So we basically trying to design a continuous time controller, then consider these delays, and then compensate for the delays. The later of this uh, week, we will also cover some uh, mapping methods from the pole for S domain to Z domain. And uh, also there's many different ways to do the discrete equivalence. So uh, in MATLAB, you got a function called C to D. So uh, by now I would uh, expect uh, you all have MATLAB installed. And uh, this C to D is pretty much the uh, one function uh, the very powerful function and all the three weeks we mentioned so far is trying to get different ways of this C2D. I'll put another video um, just on how to control the, um, uh, how to use the MetaBack control um, toolbox and uh, go through a couple of examples uh, using Meta MetaBack. When we have a continued time plant, for example, it's a, a moto or a car, a plane. We want to design controller for that. Um, we want to design a discrete time controller for that. There are two different ways to address this matter. Firstly, we can design a continuous time controller first. We do Laplace transforming S domain. and get a continuous time controller. Then we discretize the controller. There's many different ways to do this. Uh, we already know a couple of ways. One is just do the Z transform. The second way is, is we can do the zero order hold. There are many other ways. Uh, for example, the mapping of the pose in S domain and Z domain. That's another different ways. So there's a bunch of methods in there. And then we got a discrete controller and machine accomplished. This is the method we call a design by emulation. And this is the method we're going to use. So pretty much you don't need to know any new controller design methods. Um, if you are able to design a continuous time controller, what you do is just convert that into discrete time control. But in the meantime, you have to consider the problem coming from the filter and the problem coming from the zero order hold. If we compensate the issues from those two components, then our design is done. Another method is we just uh, start from the beginning, discretize the plant. 
and everything we have will become a discrete time domain um, representation. So from there, you can design a discrete time controller. So this place, um, including a lot of uh, Z domain design, which is a bunch of new information we need to learn. So this is kind of equivalent to the S domain design, but they are slightly different and there's a lot of new things we need to learn. So that's why we don't go this path. What we're going to do is do this emulation because uh, uh, this is a simpler uh, to learn and with minimum information, we can learn all this uh, within one week. Design by emulation. In summary, we have two steps to design the system. First step is to design a continuous time controller. Pretty much we just consider we're going to do a continuous time design. Uh, use whatever um, control strategy you learned before to make sure the system up to a certain standard. Normally we look at the standard is like um, steady state arrow, the rising time, the uh, overshoot. Um, from frequency domain, we look at the face margin, gain margin, those kind of uh, criteria. Then after that, we consider the, the effects of the um, DA and AD uh, components and uh, make some small compensation on those uh, um, delays caused by, by AD DA components. Um, to be honest, this is only needed if our sampling rate sampling rate is uh, not super high. Well, high is compared to the system bandwidth. If we have a super fast computer, super powerful calculation, we can have the sampling rate super fast then we don't have to consider all those other issues. Okay, we just design continuous time controller, convert that to, to discrete time. That's it. We don't have to um, consider the issues coming from the DAAD converter. However, in most cases, uh, we don't have that luxury because of the cost and also the capability of controller. So in reality, we have to consider the issues coming from the digital analog and analog digital conversion. And both of this will cause certain kind of delay. Uh, we know that zero odd hold. So this one is zero odd hold causing a delay of uh, half of the sampling time. And AD conversion, this will, we need a anti um, alias filter. So this will cause, if it's a first order filter, it'll cause a little bit delay um, in the high frequency. So this two will both contribute to unstable um, intention for the system. So we have to compensate those loss um, with a, a suitable sampling period or sampling frequency uh, choose this effects is depend on that frequency. The faster the frequency, the smaller the effect will be. Um, like we said, normally we get a trade off. We don't want to get a super fast, uh, high frequency uh, sampling rate because that's costly and uh, sometimes it's just impossible. So we select something reasonably high to avoid the alias issue and uh, then we consider the effects that kind of sampling frequency cause for the system and compensate for that. There are six steps in the design process for design by emulation. The first step is to design a continuous time controller as normal. And then we check its performance. That's always the case. You have to make sure the required standard is satisfied. Sometimes it's rise time. 
sometimes it's a steady state arrow sometimes it's a bandwidth uh, margin face margin uh, gain margin sometimes it's overshoot depends on the uh, plant you want to control and depends on the goal you want to achieve so these are the criteria you set up at the beginning and you once you got your controller you have to check are these criteria satisfied or not then next step so the first two step is uh, for ct control the next step is to start consider what's the sampling frequency uh, based on the bandwidth of your uh, continuous time uh, system so that bandwidth can be found from both the diagram you can get the open loop or closed loop bandwidth from both diagram and uh, from there you the, the sampling frequency and uh, you're going to add uh, two components for the system one is the filter anti aliasing filter the other one is zero or the hold uh, those two components for the system and uh, next step is to do the discretization convert the controller from s domain to z domain um, this is as i mentioned a, a few different methods there's many methods like five six different methods and uh, in MATLAB, this is what's called C2D. Many different options. Uh, there's no best option for all, all the cases. Each option is suitable for a particular um, usage. So, uh, like in general, control theory is a trade-off. You don't get everything perfect because anything uh, comes with benefit also causes some, some issues. Um, so after this conversion, you get your digital controller, and from that, you f can convert that to the actually the control program inside the computer, uh, become a difference equation. So computer basically use this as your uh, control, um, as your kind of a, a control algorithm. Then again, you have to check the performance check the performance yeah, check your performance um, so I think the critical part here is a little bit hard here is this step 4 at the components so that's kind of special and part 5 this is uh, probably the most uh, complicated situation uh, you if depends on different uh, uh, case you wanted to use different uh, um, method to do the C2D so you should um, both understand how to do it manually on paper and also be able to do that um, using a metal uh, control toolbox using the program and also have a complete understanding of what's the difference between all different type of uh, uh, digitalized um, method okay and when uh, to use which method Let's look at a bit more details of each step. The first step is to design a continuous time controller. So if you have a plant, you get a model. Um, this DS is the this, uh, continuous time controller. There's many different methods to do that. You can use a loot locus, you can get a boat diagram design, get a PID design. You can do the state space design for the pole placement you can get a lead compensator or you have a lag compensator so in this area there's a lot of uh, um, content in there if you find any one of the textbook in the continuous time design you you will see tons of information so we consider that's the pretty required knowledge uh, for this subject you can also go to the website for from that Michigan University where we got a, a bunch of examples I think I put that on week 8 uh, slides when we are introduced about the project um, 
and it's it's just this kind of um, information is everywhere so i won't be able to repeat that what i will do is probably i go through matlab to just show you one example how how everything goes with uh, designing a controller like that then second step is once you get a controller you have to check the behavior uh, the behavior is normally within uh, two different domains uh, in time domain behavior Okay, step response, there's many indicators here. Rising time, steady state arrow. You have your uh, overshoot. That's all coming from the, um, con from the uh, step response. Then you also check the um, boat diagram for the frequency domain analysis. Uh, you have to normally to get gain margin and the face margin within certain kind of range uh, to make sure the system is actually stable. And then next step is find the closed loop bandwidth. This is where we need to have to find the sampling frequency. Because we know that our sampling frequency needs to be at least uh, um, twice of these close uh, band bandwidths, but in general we pick like something between 20 to 40 times of this uh, uh, frequency. So uh, again about these first three steps, um, on the website of the Michigan University, uh, the control toolbox, there's many examples there. Um, if you find any textbook about continuous time controller, there's many examples there, so I won't get to too much of detail in, in that. Step three is to choose the sampling frequency. So this is coming from the uh, Omega S, is coming from the closed loop bandwidth, okay? Just be careful, our system will have two different bandwidths. One is open loop, one is closed loop. The closed loop bandwidth of the continuous time system, the omega, omega B, that's what we care about because our sampling frequency needs to be 20 to 40 times um, over that bandwidth. Uh, this is to make sure there's no aliasing uh, happening. And uh, um, once we choose that frequency, we decide the anti-alias uh, filter uh, normally that frequency is half of our sampling frequency. So this guarantees if our system, even our system bandwidth is, is low, maybe there's noise, there will be um, some other disturbance happening to the system. Uh, even in that case, because of this filter, those noise will be filtered out and uh, make sure our sampling is actually getting the samples we want rather than getting those uh, um, uh, alias uh, uh, signal. And uh, a simple structure for the first order anti-alias filter is this. Uh, this is in S domain. Uh, the PO is uh, actually uh, S is equal to omega P. Okay? So this is how you actually do this. Uh, for the um, choosing the sampling frequency based on closed loop bandwidth, and also choosing the anti-alias filter based on the sampling frequency. Step four is to checking the behavior our, of our continuous design when we have this DAC and uh, anti-alias filter put in there. So DAC is what I mean, zero order hold. And the anti-aliasing filter is linked to the sampling. So pretty much we got the effects of uh, these two additional um, components on the continuous time system. Okay, so all our analyze is in continuous time system. We don't deal with things in Z domain. Just to avoid learning a bunch of kind of new knowledge. Okay, because eventually the uh, design 
in the end will be quite similar. The outcome, the result is quite similar no matter how we uh, approach it. So we approach that using our existing knowledge in S domain design uh, rather than learning a, a bunch of new tools in, in Z domain. Um, so we mentioned the um, issues causing by DA and AD uh, for DA, the zero or the hold, this will cause in our delay of delay of half of the sampling time. For AD, the anti aliasing filter, we have the frequency is half of the um, sampling frequency. So these are the details how much effect it causes for the zero or the hold. You can simplify that this is according a delay. So it's kind of E negative ST over two. So this is a delay of half T representing S domain. And for the um, bow diagram, this will mean the delta. So this is how much phase it change at certain frequency is like that it's negative omega T over two. Uh, depends on different omega, it will have different uh, impacts. So the uh, larger the omega, it will causing larger uh, delay. So it's not kind of a linear thing. For the uh, anti aliasing filter, the delay is constant with half of the omega s. So we got actual model for those two components um, in S domain. So this is how we model the filter in S domain. And this is how we model the delay caused by zero or hold in S domain. Then if we have these two things in our transfer function, say if you are doing the uh, block diagram using Simulink to simulate your system, you add these two components in your system um, from your original S domain um, design, then this will count the issue bring in by the sampling. So you obviously have to choose your sampling frequency uh, properly. Um, then you can draw the step response, draw your ball diagram and all those uh, continuous time domain tools to compare the performance. If that performance is, is worse, then you do something to adjust your continuous time design uh, controller. And here, the performance of this whole bit bot is uh, equal to or similar to what we have previously, just the DS itself. Now we have our continuous time controller DS. This is a DS with the consideration of ADDA converter. This is not the original DS for our continuous time system. This is a modified DS. Um, we have to implement this DS in the computer. So first step is convert this DS into DZ in Z domain. Uh, then we can use the knowledge we learned in the week eight. Okay, you have DZ equal to uz over ez, then you can write uh, this difference equation to uh, like a computer program, then it can be implemented. There's many different ways to convert ds to dz, many different methods, which I'm going to introduce a little bit later uh, in the second part of this lecture. Um, each one of these methods have their own advantages and also their own limitations. So it depends on what's the goal of your control, you choose one of the methods. There's no perfect methods um, because in from S domain to Z domain, uh, you can't really map everything perfectly. There's always limitations there. So let's look at if we got this DZ, how do we got the computer program. So this is covered in week eight. If you go back to week eight lecture, um, there's a few different examples over there. So simple method is you got a transfer function like that. Then Z will cause, um, if we just multiply 
cross uh, multiply both sides, you got this one. And z will cause a time delay. So every z you multiply with your y z, you're causing the count to plus one uh, for z and plus two for z squared. So this z goes to this one. And if we just a constant, you got yk. So from yz to yk, depends on how many z is in there, you kind of doing offset with the counts. Uh, same thing for the u. Okay, you get a z with uz, you get the uk plus one. For the constant, it just become uk. So this is actually the controller we have. We can implement this very easily using MATLAB program or any other um, program. If you can put in a loop and keep keep kind of uh, iteratively uh, running this, you, you got your control algorithm. Um, and sometimes we, we write like that. So we don't want like to uh, get um, our result to be represented as k plus 2. We want our result to be represented by k and everything else is a little bit earlier. So either one or two sampling time earlier than the um, um, the current time. And with that and plus some initial condition, then we can solve uh, the problem. The next step is to check the behavior of our sample data system. Um, this pro uh, block diagram, it look at quite different from previously. This dz is our discrete time controller. And this gz is the model coming from our orig original plant in S domain. And we use zero odd hold to convert that into a transfer function in z domain. So what we did, what we uh, designed here, this thing should have exactly the same performance as our continuous time um, system with consolidation of those two components adding in between. If you go back a few slides, I think that's in step four. And here we ignore the problem coming from the anti allies filter because that's normally compared to the zero order hold and compared to everything else, that's, that's minor. And you can use a simulink to simulate this block diagram or you can do the calculation uh, in MATLAB to get the performance of our sampled data system. So this is the kind of the true behavior for the sample data system. And uh, the if you do this in uh, MATLAB with the calculation, that's kind of your closed loop transfer function. You can get a pose and zeros. You can do all those uh, analysis. You can do a um, step response, get the transient response. You can draw the uh, bow diagram, get a face margin and gain margin. And those things are the indicator of your final design. And if those indicators are satisfied with our original design uh, requirements, then we see we got a good designer. Okay. Also, we can include this anti-aliasing filter. Just make things a little bit more complicated. Um, however, like I said, the effect of this um, is uh, relatively small compared to everything else. So uh, in most cases, you can ignore it. But um, mm -hmm. uh, if you, when you design, you already consider that it doesn't really matter too much. So this week, I only go through. In summary, design by emulation. Uh, is breaking to those six steps. Um, but the first thing you do is uh, you design a continuous time controller. That's the first thing you do to make sure the performance of your controller is satisfied. Then what you do is you introduce these two components to your controller and uh, to change this DS. So DS goes to, I would say DS prime or D2S. Uh, it's a different DS now. Um, this DS um, will have the same performance as the original system by including those two 
um, DA and AD components. So by changing the DS, these two will have the equivalent performance uh, from our requirement. Then the third thing uh, is to check the performance in, in digital domain. So we discretize the plants and uh, put all these three together as our controller and we can check our performance. And also here we have to actually implement this DS, so DS, uh, DZ, sorry. The DZ then becomes DK in uh, difference equation. So these are the kind of three kind of uh, block diagrams we're going step by step uh, by doing uh, design by emulation. Next uh, session, I'll put some examples, uh, walk through the examples, which give you a much uh, kind of better understanding of the whole process.